Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about Elixir. So let's get into it. So the question in question was a little bit of a story. Hi Frederick, I'm working at a startup doing mostly front-end with React. I've also been working occasionally in Elixir and the rest in uh, 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 Elixir Phoenix and Absinthe and 80, 85% in JavaScript and React. Uh, t -t 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 mostly doing stuff like resolvers and tests and GraphQL, uh, GQL, GraphQL stuff I'm assuming. And I'd like some professional advice. I'm more comfortable in JavaScript obviously, but I enjoy working in Elixir a lot. I see the potential in live view, especially now that the components that um, now that components work the way that they work. Uh, and JS frameworks are finally coming to live view, but I'm not sure if I should invest more time in uh, in Elixir than needed to do my job or focus my free time on improving my JS developer skills and Node which I haven't really worked with professionally besides maintaining microservices and microservices and the rare Lambda. I find myself struggling with libraries, the ecosystem and the occasional gotchas, but I know how valuable Elixir developers are I know how valuable Elixir developers are because my company struggles hiring them it struggles in hiring them. I find debugging better in Elixir than for example Node, but looking for JS but tooling for JS is better overall, like getting types in VS Code. Also, I'd like to learn more about the backend because I find the front-end community to be infested with politics and just want, I just want to do my job. Would love to hear your advice on uh, hear, would love your advice as a seasoned developer with experience in multiple stacks. Well, uh, I will offer my two cents on the topic. So my two cents on this is going to be that if your goal here is to be applicable for jobs, then React and JavaScript and what you're kind of doing already and like Node in a sense, but not as much, but for sure JavaScript at the very least, is going to be a better bet than Elixir. And I'm not saying that from the perspective of like, as you were saying, like it's hard to find Elixir developer, which is, it's this is always the case with more non-mainstream languages and I will go almost I did very much depends now so you're kind of gonna have to take you know take what I'm saying now with a pinch of salt when I say non-mainstream language I'm talking about languages that are not a f one of the following usually which is going to be languages like Java, C sharp, C plus plus, and C in in a sense uh, as well, depending on like uh, for web the, the those are not so necessarily re relevant. Uh, Python, PHP, JavaScript. Uh, maybe I forgot something there. Well, it doesn't really matter. But like you, th these are like the behemoth languages usually for every country in almost every region you're gonna find well n someone using mo a few of these javascript for def for sure and like java is the same as java and c sharp like the biggest three i would say is java c sharp and uh, javascript now with that said on the other hand if you're then in a stack that is less common well there are benefits to that as well uh, because if say that you know Elixir or you know I don't know Scala or you know Haskell or whatever and you want to make like a play for getting a higher salary or things like that these are things that might be well like the higher ability of these languages is pretty good in the sense like because as you were saying like companies that are using these languages they think they can't find anybody so you're in a pretty good negotiation position. But as I said, on the other hand, well, you're not, that's not as common. So you might have, I mean, if the companies are not looking for developers, well, then you don't have that many options to, to, to go around to, right? Uh, but if you're like a standard Java developer, you can basically work across the entire globe if you wanted to, or like if you don't get one job for a specific thing that you're looking for there's like a hundred other opportunities that will include Java. Elixir not so much. 
But with that said, I think that you should go for passion here. The reason why I say that you should go for passion is because I always think that you should bet on passion when there is no clear downside per se to doing so. Because the thing is, yes, you can do like development in JavaScript, you can do it in and like just kind of churn through it. But if you have already identified that you have something that you quite enjoy doing, I, Elixir is a little bit of an extreme case, but I argue that that's the thing that you should hook into because if you get good at Elixir as an example that is actually going to motivate you to be a better developer than you are today because that's the thing you think that by just betting on the biggest safest language you're you know you're going to be fine and yes if you maintain like a the healthy competency level etc cetera, etc cetera. but if your goal is to be the best developer that you can be passion is a bitter is a bigger deal because the thing is even if you get to be a master of elixir and then the jobs dry up for that type of development well you still have the experience now as i was saying elixir is a little bit of a diff a, li a little bit of a specific case but i mean if you were a java developer or whatever like uh, as an example i did scala for many years and then i'm um, Moving, uh, I moved to. I uh, want to move to another company. I still apply for all the Java positions, and it would be pr well, not exactly the same thing for C Sharp. But I mean, the, the 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 you already have the experience, and it's the same thing. I applied for a job where like it wasn't like they did Go development. They had no way of finding Go developers, and I've proven that I know multiple languages, if the several stacks, etc., etc. So they were like, oh yeah, sure. Oh, we will hire you. Like they made it, they made me an offer, just because they knew that it's like it's it's just another programming language. Now, as I said, Elixir is special, but I think that that's the healthy way for you to think. Follow your passion, and try to uh, try to make that work for you at first. Uh, like to start off with, if it really doesn't work, it doesn't work. But tr start there because. As I said, that's the thing that's going to push you to be better and better. And this, at the end of the day, that's the thing that matters most. Most companies will not care. After a certain level of experience, they don't really, like, as long as, if you can do the job, you can do the job. But what they're really looking for is those superstar, awesome developers who have passion and fire and hunger and all that stuff. That's the thing that makes you really, really hireable. And that's the thing that I think that Elixir will give you, at least based on what you've been saying. It seems to be the thing that, like, the, that's where your interests lie. So follow that until it doesn't work anymore, or until you've hit the pot of gold at the end of it. So what I want you to take away from this is that, in general, you can think about picking your stack, or whatever you're doing, in two ways. Either you go for the boring, obvious stuff, and like the stuff that is always like always in demand or you go for something a little bit more niche something that is less mainstream and there's really no like there are problems and there are cons which it doesn't really matter which you pick there's no wrong thing here it really just comes down it comes down to what pros and cons do you want to deal with do you want to have a lot of opportunities available to you or do you want to be a rarer find in amongst developers, more of a specialist, and maybe make a play for making more money. The thing is, I want to warn you and just say that just because you know something like I don't know Haskell, does not guarantee you that you're going to make more money than someone who knows Java or JavaScript. It really, it's not that simple. But uh, theoretically, yes, something like that could could be the case. But given your, uh, given uh, all things considered, I think that you should always try to go for passion first because it doesn't really matter which language you pick because if you're a passionate developer and you're a little bit flexible, you can transition into things if you want to. You can do pretty much whatever you want and every single company wants to hire passionate, driven developers who can do the job and a good developer who pushes it will be able to transition to in w into whatever direction they want if they feel like the thing that they're doing right now isn't really working out for them. Have a great day.